गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट अ न्यू चैप्टर ग्राफ कलरिंग सो इफ यू सी दिस मैप देन दिस इज द मैप ऑफ द यूनाइटेड स्टेट्स वेयर डिफरेंट बॉक्सेज आर रिप्रजेंटिंग द स्टेट्स ऑफ द यू एस एंड द आइडिया इज टू कलर टू स्टेट्स in a such a way that the neighboring color should have the different colors for example these two are the neighboring and they have the different colors there they are the neighboring and they have the different colors this rises to the problem of the graph coloring so vertex coloring or proper vertex coloring is an assignment of colors to the vertices so that no two adjacent to vertices should have the same color so for example if you have the triangle so you give the color 1 2 3 so now 1 3 are adjacent and 1 2 3 represents the color so you can see that they have the different colors even if you make this one then again you can see that all the adjacent vertices have the different colors so if you color the graph or if you color the vertices of the graph with k or lesser colors then this coloring is known as the k coloring and in that case the graph is k colorable graph so whenever we say k colorable we are talking about the k vertex colorable so see this example in the first case the graph is colored with five colors so it's five colorable and in the second case you can see that only three colors are required to color it so this graph is of course five colorable and if the order of the graph is n then it is always n colorable because you can this is the easiest thing to do that you give the different color to each of the vertex so if the graph is k colorable then the least k for which it is k colorable gives you the chromatic number which is denoted as chi of g it means it gives you the minimum number of the colors which are required to color the graph so for this graph the chromatic number is 3 this initially by intuition you can verify that this graph cannot be colored with one or two colors so quickly do this exercise try to find the chromatic number of k4 k5 and the complete bipartite graph k3 comma 4 so for k4 it comes out to be 4 because each vertex is adjacent to all other vertices and therefore all the vertices would require different color and same rule applies for k5 but in case of the bipartite graph if you give one color to one partite set and the other color to the other partite set then you can observe that not only complete bipartite graph but every bipartite graph can be easily colored with two colors next question please try to find the chromatic number of the following graph right now we do not study any procedure at the same time it's simply an exercise where we are not proving that let's say if you say the chromatic number is 5 then if you have to claim that it's 5 we have to show that it cannot be colored with 1 2 and 3 and 4 colors so we are not going to that much detail just for an exercise we need to try to find the minimum number of the colors which are required to color the graph so here it's 3 so you can see that three colors have been used so brown orange and green well known peterson graph try to find the chromatic number of the peterson graph so it comes out to be 3 which is visible here again the coloring may not be unique there can be different ways to color it but the chromatic number of course it is fixed determine the chromatic number of the null graph then complete graph path graph tree cycle graph and bipartite graph 
if you see the null graph then of course the same color can be used for all the vertices because none of the vertices are adjacent in case of the complete graph kn thrombotic number is n which we have already discussed in case of the path graph you can see that alternate colors can always be given so you can always color it with two colors tree also it can be colored with two colors especially if you draw the tree in terms of the levels then you can see that to each level you can give the alternate colors something like this and therefore tree can always be colored with two colors cycle graph please do try all of them by yourself in case of the cycle graph if it's an even line then you can see that two colors are sufficient but in case of odd length after giving one two one two you will find that the third color is required and therefore it depends on n if n is even the chromatic number of cycle graph is two otherwise it's three for the bipartite graph we have already discussed so its chromatic number is two so null graph is one even we say that null graph is the only graph for which the chromatic number is one because if there is an adjacency then you need at least two colors complete graph n even complete graph is the only graph for which the chromatic number is n for the path graph it's true for the tree again it's true i have already told you that you can draw the graph in terms of draw the tree in terms of the levels and that gives you the chromatic number for the cycle graph 2 and 3 and last one is the bipartite graph and again the claim is that since tree is also bipartite so therefore both are equivalent so if chromatic number is 2 then of course it's a bipartite graph and if bipartite graph is there then the chromatic number must be equal to 2 okay so moving further very interesting observation says that if there are k blocks so recall that what is a block so it's a maximal connected components so if the graph has k blocks and if you need to find the chromatic number of the graph then it is maximum of the chromatic number of all the blocks so first see an example and then we'll discuss it further for example if you need to find the chromatic number of this graph and you start giving colors to each vertex 1 2 3 4 so on and so on it's a hard exercise but instead of that you can look for the blocks so for example 2 3 4 is a block whose chromatic number is 3 it's a k3 1 2 is a block chromatic number is 2 path graph then this is the next block chromatic number is 3 please do see by yourself this is again chromatic number is 3 the next block is 7 8 9 10 11 so you can give one here then 2 3 2 3 so chromatic number is 3 then one more block and more block so you can see that the maximum is 3 and therefore the chromatic number of this graph is 3 but now we need to see that why it happens why the chromatic number of the graph is maximum of chromatic number of all the blocks so to prove it we will use the induction on the number of the blocks the first thing we already know that each block is a subgraph so when it is a subgraph it has lesser number of the vertices and edges and therefore chromatic number of each subgraph is less than equal to chromatic number of g and this is why the maximum of chi of bi should always be less than equal to chi of g so to prove the result we need to show that now chi of g is less than equal to maximum of chi of bi this is what need to be proved to prove it we will use the induction so the result is true for k for k is equal to 1 because for k is equal to 1 there is only one block so it's the same graph g so chi of g is less than equal to chi of g now assume that the equality holds for all the graphs having k 
k minus 1 or lesser blocks and g with the graph with k blocks b1 b2 bk now let now i have graph g and induction is on the block so i need to delete one of the block so that i can use the induction on the remaining graph to choose that block i consider the block to be a leaf in the block cut point graph recall that the block cut point graph so you represent each block so let's say two blocks are there you represent them by a vertex and if they are sharing a vertex then that vertex is also there so block cut point graph is always a tree and therefore it has a leaf why we are choosing it to be corresponding to a leaf that we will discuss at the end of the proof so if you consider g dash which means you delete block bk then the remaining graph is g dash for the g dash induction holds and therefore chi of g dash is less than equal to maximum of chi of b1 b2 bk now this is the situation on one side you have g dash and if you put back the block then there is some common vertex u and there is a block bk yes now if you have to color the graph then what do you do let's say you need 10 colors here 1 2 3 4 5 and so on 9 and 10 and 11th color is here u is also a vertex in bk these 10 colors first i try to reuse for bk yes if let's say bk get colored only in five colors which has already been used good enough if 10 colors are not sufficient i will introduce the more colors it means that to color the whole graph we need the maximum of chi of g dash and chi of bk this is the most important thing because if you take the maximum of those and why with the maximum because we are reusing the color so based on this we can say that for any coloring g dash using chi g dash color we can extend this coloring so extend means we reuse the colors and why we can reuse them because only common vertex is u to a proper coloring of g which is g dash union bk using maximum of chi of g dash chi of bk this is the most important part and now since we can color chi of g with maximum of chi of g dash chi of bk therefore chi of g is less than equal to this now i replace chi of g dash with chi of b1 b2 bk minus 1 and that gives me the required inequality so the important observation is that if you do not consider bk to be a leaf then the situation would be like this you have bk here then you have some blocks here b1 b2 b3 and you have some blocks here b4 b5 b6 sharing some common vertex so when you delete it then you have to consider the maximum of this part this part and this part making the process more complicated so this is why it's quite easy to consider bk to be a block which corresponds to the leaf the next question is what is the relation between chromatic number and maximum degree of a simple graph so this result says that the chromatic number is always less than equal to 1 plus delta g its proof is quite easy so i want you to think over it and you can easily write it down its proof so let's discuss it to prove it again we will use the induction on n yes it means let's assume the result is true result is of course true for n is equal to 1 so let's assume that it's true for all the graph with n minus 1 or lesser vertices and g with the graph with n vertices yes now consider u to be any vertex you delete u so you consider g minus u now for g minus u also the maximum degree can be delta g or less than delta g 
this is the only possibility because you have deleted a vertex if the maximum degree so of course it cannot exceed delta g the maximum degree and therefore we know that g minus u can be colored with for sure delta plus one color so it has a proper coloring with one with one plus delta colors now you need to put back u so when you put back u then it must have neighbors but since the maximum degree is delta then it can have maximum delta neighbors yes now when you think of the coloring g minus u is already colored with delta plus one colors now you need to color the vertex u when you have to color then it should have the different color from its neighbors yes the worst case is all the neighbors should have a different color this might be possible this is the worst case because sometimes it is also possible if neighbors are not adjacent then the same color can be used for them but the worst case is let's assume all the neighbors have the different colors so use delta colors for all the neighbors but we know that g minus u has delta plus one coloring it means we have delta plus one available colors out of which delta colors have been used by the neighbors of u so the last color can always be used by u which means that you can color the graph g with one plus delta colors and chromatic number is the least minimum number of the colors required so g can always be colored with one plus delta colors it means chromatic number should always be less than equal to one plus delta g so proof is there on this slide you can again read it if any point is not clear so the next question is can you think of some graphs for which the equality hold which means chi of g is equal to 1 plus delta g okay so if you try to think then you will observe that if you consider k n so for k n chi n is equal to n and the maximum degree is n minus 1 so n minus 1 plus 1 which is equal to 1 plus delta g again if you think c n where n is odd then it's 3 and it's a cycle graph so maximum degree is 2 so 2 plus 1 3 so for the complete graph and the cycle graph of odd degree you can see that the equality holds and this really leads us to the brooks theorem which says that if a connected simple graph which is neither complete nor a cycle of odd length then the chromatic number it's a more strict bound is less than equal to delta g okay we are not discussing the proof of the brooks theorem but please do remember it's a very important result so we will use brooks theorem to show that the chromatic number of the peterson graph is 3 recall that we have already seen the three coloring of the peterson graph but now we have to show that so if you use the brooks theorem then clearly the chromatic number is less than equal to 3 because all the vertices have degree 3 which means that the maximum degree is 3 only thing need to show that 1 and 2 is not possible now the peterson graph is not a null graph so 1 is not possible peterson graph is not a bipartite graph because it is a cycle of length 5 girth is 5 so it's not bipartite so chromatic number 2 is not possible so 1 and 2 are not possible it should be less than equal to 3 it means of course it should be equal to 3 so that's all from today's class in the next class we will see that how to find the chromatic number for the planar graphs thank you very much